Tomorrow is Veterans Day, formerly known as Armistice Day. It is a commemoration of the end of World War I, November 11th, 1918. It is a day to honor America's veterans for their patriotism, love of country, and willingness to serve and sacrifice for the common good. Against that backdrop, let's join public address announcer Jeremy Goss. Turn to Owen Field in just a moment, but first, let's go to John Saunders and Terry Bowden at Times Square Stadium. Sean, thanks a lot, and welcome to the ABC College Football Mobile Update as we get ready for Oklahoma against Texas A&M. And, and Terry, right now, Oklahoma has their eyes on Nebraska in a rematch in the Big 12 Championship game, but they can't afford to stumble against A&M. They're playing much too good defense to stumble right here, and Texas A&M is not playing very good on offense. I don't know if Oklahoma scores three or they score 30, but it's going to be Oklahoma something, Texas A&M nothing. All right, we talked about that Big 12 Championship game, perhaps a rematch. But before that, if Oklahoma drops, Texas could slide in against Nebraska, perhaps. Or how about this scenario? Oklahoma wins all the way down to face Nebraska again on December 1st on ABC in the Big 12 Championship game. Loses for a second time to the Huskers, and the Bowl Championship Series may take Texas over Oklahoma, even though Oklahoma beat Texas. John Bob Stoops will not let his coaches or his players focus on something they can't control. He'll be too busy telling his players, we will win out, we will go to the Rose Bowl, and we will win the national championship. Clearly today, a lot of big tests on the football landscape. Some of you at 3.30 Eastern time will see one of those as Kansas State looks to knock off Nebraska, number one team in the Bowl Championship Series standings. Others will be in the Pac-10, a couple of very good teams, UCLA taking on Oregon. Bob Stoops and R.C. Slocum ready for play. It's coming up after this message and a word from your ABC stations. This college football update brought to you by SpeedPass at Exxon and Mobile. Even in a storied program like Oklahoma, Coach Bob Stoops could not have experienced the ultimate in success any sooner. The gang from Norman's conquest of both conference
Congress had national hardware in 2000 was magical, but there's still room in the trophy case. They certainly have the defense to defend with possibly the best linebacker and the best defensive back in the land. Oklahoma continues to find ways to win. It was just a single loss. There's no reason for anyone to jump off the Sooner bandwagon. ABC Sports welcomes you to Memorial Stadium in Norman, Oklahoma. Sold out as it has been for all 17 games of the Bob Stoops era. Today, his fourth-ranked Sooners play host for the Aggies of Texas A&M. And it's a good news, bad news situation for the Aggies. The good news, they control their own destiny in the Big 12 South, even though they trail both Texas and Oklahoma. That's because their two remaining games are against the Sooners and Longhorns, and that's the bad news. It's the toughest remaining schedule facing any team in the country. Hello, everyone, and welcome. I'm Sean McDonough, along with Ed Cunningham. Delighted to have you with us. Texas A&M does control its own destiny in the Big 12 South. And Oklahoma, they're talking about controlling their own destiny in the national championship picture. And if they win out, they are likely to defend their national championship of the Rose Bowl game. But, Ed, if they do it, it's going to be with Nate Hibble at quarterback. Jason White, they finally made the decision to repair that ACL. They'll have reconstructive surgery next Tuesday. And Nate Hibble, now that he is the man, has to be very smart. Last week against Tulsa, he felt like he had something to prove, played very well, but he took on some linebackers head on. He'll be very wise to start hook sliding and getting rid of the ball into the stands when he has to. He has to stay healthy. And perhaps the most interesting one-on-one -on -one matchup in this game is along the line of scrimmage. The veteran center outstanding player for Texas a and Seth McKinney, against the true freshman defensive tackle for Oklahoma, Tommy Harris. A lot of times we get tied into defensive backs and wide receivers, but for A&M to be able to run the ball, it will have to be with Seth McKinney, his 47th consecutive start. He'll get his graduate degree in December for an A&M. Across from him at the nose guard is Tommy Harris. You mentioned a true freshman already, Sean, being mentioned as one of the top two or three defensive linemen in all of the country. It's a morning kickoff here in Norman, Oklahoma, but already the passing game is clicking for the Sooners and their fans. The opening kickoff right after this. Come on. Ready to go here at Memorial Stadium. Texas A&M 7-2 overall. Won the toss and elected to defer. So Oklahoma will take the football. And Cody Skate, who serves in the dual role as place kicker and punter, will kick off for the Aggies. Antoine Savage and Curtis Fagan, number 6 and 12, respectively, standing near their goal line. Light breeze at the back of skates as he kicks off on a gorgeous day. Expected to get up near 70 degrees here in Norman. Antoine Savage from the goal line. Belted down at the 17-yard line. Elon Jackson made the tackle, a heavy hit. Here's Leslie Goodell. Sean, Texas A&M quarterback Mark Ferris will be relied upon heavily today to carry his young and inexperienced offense against Oklahoma's sixth-ranked defense. Ferris' strengths are his experience in a 26 years old, married with a wife, with a young daughter, rather. He's more mature than most quarterbacks. I talked to R.C. Fulton before the game. He said Ferris will have to make big plays today. He needs to have a good day throwing, and he'll have to stay poised under pressure. All will be big factors in the outcome of today's game. He's clearly the leader of this injury-plagued Texas A&M team, but it's Oklahoma on offense at the moment. And Nate Hibble, the starting quarterback, throws to the near side, and it is caught but out of bounds. Caught by Antoine Savage, and the officials rule him out near the 30-yard line. An incomplete pass, thrown by Hibble, the junior from Hazelhurst, Georgia, a transfer from the University of Georgia. He was their starting quarterback at the beginning of the season for the first six games, and he was injured. White stepped in and played well, and now with White down with a knee injury at his Hibble team, and they hope that they can keep him healthy for the rest of the year. Takes a shovel pass, it might have been covered, that might have been the original intent of the play, and now Hibble chased out of bounds back at the nine-yard line. Harold Robertson, a backup linebacker, ran him out of bounds. 
big down for the wrecking crew defense to get some field position for their offense. Dibble had to avoid the rush in the end zone. Now he's going to try to run. The Aggies take him down shy of the 20. Rod Penwright, standing defensive end, made the tackle. He's part of the front four with Ty Warren, Rocky Bernard, and Evan Peroni was scheduled to start as he was a late scratch. Christian Rodriguez, Jared Morris, Brian Gamble, and Penwright. He plays along the line in linebacker. Weston Davis, Keel, and Botovich. The secondary, Botovich in again today for the injured Jay Brooks, who did not make the trip for Texas A&M. Jeff Ferguson nearly had it blocked. Referee Tom Allers indicated the hunt was partially deflected, but it still rolls all the way to the 42-yard line. It was Wes Botovich, the starting safety, who nearly blocked the punt. A 42-yard punt. And they'll return, and now Mark Ferris leads that A&M offense onto the field. The junior from Angleton, Texas, as Leslie mentioned, married with a daughter, 26 years old, the former minor league baseball player. And with all the injuries that A&M has had around him at wide receivers, Robert Ferguson left last year to go to the NFL. Very inexperienced offense. They've had to bring some things back in. So many things go through him now, making sure that everybody knows the protection. I expect Oklahoma, Sean, very early to test this offensive line and bring heat from everywhere. Three receivers to the left. Austin coming the lone back, lined up offset. Harris wants to go deep on the first play from Simmons, and it's incomplete. He's looking for Karen Murphy, the true freshman. Antonio Perkins had the coverage for Oklahoma. The Midas lineup on offense for Texas A&M. Joe Weber split side of fullback with Stacy Jones. Farmer, the true freshman, their leading rusher. Thomas Carriger, another true freshman, the tight end. Murphy, the true freshman, and Taylor, the sophomore. A very young group, primarily due to injury. Another true freshman, high tower, left tackle, McKinney, the All-American candidate at center. That rings in Yates, Ridley, and Mahan up front. Take the handoff on the end of the round and try the middle. And no gain on the play. Oshler Fleming, the ball carrier. He ran into Jimmy Wilkerson, the part of that front four, along with Harris, Corey Klein, and Corey Heineke. Outstanding linebackers, Brandon Moore with Teddy Lehman in the middle, and the Buckus Award candidate, Calvin. And the secondary is the first start for Perkins, but he played a lot this year. Very straight a veteran. Everidge and Roy Williams, perhaps, perhaps the best defensive back in the country, is the strong safety. Third down and ten for Ferris and the Aggies. Ferris looks to run. He's down about a yard short of the first down. He's made it just across midfield. Rocky Calmus with another tackle. He had 17 of them last year against AM in that memorable game between these two teams at College Station, which was the biggest scare the Sooners had in the regular season on their way to the national championship. They were down 10 points in the fourth quarter and came back to win. A lot of the Sooners will tell you that's the day, even though it was the ninth game of the year, they realized that they were perhaps in the midst of a very special season. Of course, it was. It turned out to be a national championship season. Brandon Jones, the freshman, back for a very high punt from Skates, and the fair catch made. Bobbled for a moment, but made by Jones. Each team has had it once. No score here in Norman. We're back in Norman, Oklahoma, and the Sooners are ready to go. Their second possession of the game, first and ten from their own 11-yard line. Hibble swings it wide for Quentin Grip. He gets nothing. Andy Davis, the quarterback, up to make the play. We mentioned the meeting last season between these two teams, and what a game it was, one of the best of the year in college football. Texas A&M led throughout, and led by four with under eight minutes to go. And so Mark Ferris threw the interception, and Torrance Marshall had the memorable 41-yard return that capped the 10-point fourth quarter comeback by Oklahoma, and they escaped with a four-point win. You know, Babers, the new offensive coordinator at Texas A&M, went through that game tape with Ferris. 
And if that was a UFO, you could not see that middle linebacker. Get over it. Over the middle for Josh Norman. The, the wrecking crew defense was right there. Wes Botovich. The former quarterback at Texas A&M Kingsville, who left his starting quarterback job at that school to transfer to A&M and walk on, made the tackle. Otovich, one of those guys that was, they were surprised to get. He was looking to transfer. He didn't like what was going on at Kingsville. And he just made a stop at College Station for a chance, came here as a quarterback, and the coaches talked him into switching over to safety. And he's paying off big shots. He's had to step in because of Joe Brooks had some joint problems. And third and five from the 16, the pass completely short. short of a first down. Mark Clayton, the redshirt freshman with his first catch, but it's Harold Robertson, a backup linebacker who's particularly good in pass coverage, who made the tackle. So a couple of three and outs for Oklahoma. You know, about three or four weeks ago, Sean, R.C. Slocum took it upon himself, an old defensive coach, really instilled into this defense what was expected of them as a weapon for defense. They had a couple of slow outings early against McNeese State and Wyoming games that they barely pulled out. And this wrecking crew defense from those first two games on has played so much better and kept them in every single ball game, winning most. Ferguson, second punt. A good one. Terrence Thomas, another true freshman. Cut down just shy of the 40-yard line by the long snapper, Ben Painter. A 47-yard punt and a six-yard return. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Pontiac. What would you do with some Pontiac excitement? By America's Dairy Farmers. Ah, the power of cheese. By Discover Card for the slightly smarter consumer. And by new Pepsi Twist. Pepsi and Diet Pepsi with a twist of lemon. All of a sudden, you're getting a feeling, Sean, that this is one of those games that's just going to keep going back and forth with the defense. As AM needs to get some kind of positive yards and keep winning this field control battle early on. AM shut out last Saturday at Texas Tech, losing 12 to nothing. The first time they have won since the 99 Animal Bowl by Penn State. Oscar Fleming ran into Jimmy Wilkerson. Former linebacker, now a defensive end, the sophomore from Omaha, Texas, who narrowed his recruiting choices to Oklahoma and Texas A&M. Said he just liked the atmosphere here in Norman a little bit better. Said he felt like he was family here, and being part of this family, the coaches came to him before the Orange Bowl last year against Florida State and said, hey, would you mind going to defensive end? We need more speed out there to rush against Winky, and it's paid off well. He's playing huge right now, Sean. He's really getting off the ball nice. Barrett scrambling for his life and throws it away. It was Corey Heineke applying the pressure on Ferris. It'll be third down and long. Third and eight upcoming. R.C. Slocum in his 13th year and had given the injuries, and he says he's never been around a team with the number of injuries, key injuries that this team has had. It's 7-2. and two. This is probably the best coaching job of his career. I can't imagine how he could not be considered the leading candidate for Big 12 Coach of the Year with what his staff has done. We mentioned Robert Ferguson left early. Bethel Johnson, the guy who was supposed to replace him, had to have his spleen removed out for the season. They've done amazing things with these two freshmen. There, out of the gun. The line gives him time to pass. Top of there to bang down Joe Weber. Well short of the first down. You know, Sean, this Oklahoma defense is so gifted athletically. One of the reasons, if you look at Roy Williams, although they list him as a safety, they really have five linebackers on the field. We already mentioned Wilkerson playing as a defensive end. Callum is showing why NFL scouts are tooling over him. He moves so well for a big man at 235 pounds. But really, with Roy Williams in there, they play with five linebackers. Brandon Jones, the freshman, just started returning punts last week against Tulsa. Returned seven of them for 150 yards. He said the first couple of his knees were shaking when he was back there waiting for the punt. Again, poor field position for Oklahoma after a 44-yard punt. Head coach Bob Stoop, 41 years old, a Youngstown, Ohio native, consensus national coach of the year last year as he led the Sooners to the national championship. We heard Lou Holtz speak after Notre Dame won the national championship with the Irish. The biggest mistake was he's trying to duplicate that season. Bruce said you have to improve even as national champions. Once in Oklahoma, 
has tried to do this season. That's an improvement over all the offense we've seen so far today. Quentin Griffin rumbling for the first first down for either team. Sammy Davis made the tackle, a gain of 14 for Griffin. What is so impressive about Quentin Griffin? For a little guy, five foot seven runs right through the arm tackle of Harold Robertson. So strong in his lower body, he's almost 200 pounds at five foot seven. Squats 500 pounds. He's so difficult because he's already built low to the ground. He's got great balance and great lower body strength. After four touchdowns last week against Tulsa, William and Russian, Pass Aaron. Mark Clayton was open. But the pass missed him. Time now for our Pontiac Game Solution. For Oklahoma, we already mentioned to all the young guys that they have, starting on this offensive line, they have a freshman at center, Vince Carter. They need to recognize and identify these fronts of Texas A&M. It's a 3-4 defense. They bring blitzes from everywhere. And for Texas A&M, do not get spread thin. Oklahoma brings everybody out. One thing, Gerard Penwright, the outside linebacker for Texas A&M, who leads the Big 12 against Texas Tech last week, he got too far away from the line of scrimmage. It could be a pass in the pass rush. And the Texas Tech offense very similar to the Oklahoma offense. Dibble running and knocked out of bounds near the line of scrimmage by Jesse Honeycutt and Harold Robertson. This will be third down and long. This was one of the things that Mark Mangino was talking about with Hibble, that he needs to start, if he's getting over here to the sideline, to start seeing that there is nothing there. Throw it away or tuck it and take a slide. They do not need Nate Hibble taking shots from 240-pound linebackers. Mark Mangino, former winner of the Frank Royals Award to the outstanding assistant coach in the country. Everybody's coming for Oklahoma, but a great call by Dino Babers. A slip screen 
to the wide receiver coming in from the outside. That's Mickey Jones and the offensive lineman get out in front of him. Chalk one up for Dino Babers. Just kind of got lucky that Oklahoma was bringing pressure on that one. He had the slip screen call. And we talked to Coach Babers about Jones. He said his greatest strength is his ability to run after the catch. And he did that very nicely on that play. Paris complete again. Harris Murphy, the junior freshman from Tyler, Texas, is tackled by Roy Williams, a gain of 12. And the Aggies are moving the chains in the middle of the first quarter. And Terrence Murphy, a guy, all these true freshmen out there running around, came in to uh, College Station two weeks after he graduated from high school and started working with Ferris. Ferris said he kind of bugged me. He kept coming up to me and asking me, what should I do? How much do I need to work? The reason being that Murphy had never played wide receiver in his life. He was a high school quarterback. He needed to get here early and learn, and it's paid off for him. 31 receptions this year now for Murphy. Tying the a and freshman record set by Richard Osborne in 1962. Oshler Fleming, oh, tackled really by good. Rocky Kalmus. After a short gain, a pickup of one, it'll be second down and nine. In a first quarter that's really just gone back and forth with defenses, uh, really setting the tone early. This kind of drive for A&M can set some confidence for these young guys. That was a very nice pitch and catch with Terrence Thomas. One thing A&M has to do against Oklahoma is move the pocket. Ferris having some trust in those young guys, and there's one of them who doesn't look like he's feeling too well on the sideline with Derek Palmer. Four wide receivers bunched to the right. Where the defense lined up properly. And Texas A&M called a timeout. Sean, you got to wonder why Mark Ferris would take a timeout. Here's the four receivers up here, and all the defensive backs are looking into the middle of the field. There was a lot of confusion by Oklahoma. Even as they start to back out, there's still only two defensive backs when Ferris calls a timeout. you got to figure he should go ahead and snap it and take advantage of that mismatch. And they ran the four straight down the field. There were really only two defenders there to cover the four. But Ferris called a timeout, not Oklahoma. Here's the sixth play of the drive. They were set up in good field position by a 26-yard punch. Joe Weber, nice move. And he turned a loss into a small gain. He picked up three to the 26-yard line for Matt McCoy, a reserve defensive back, and Rocky Kalmus got Weber on the ground. Weber is such a nice weapon out of the backfield for Texas A&M, was a running back last year. Changed in the spring, they asked him to go over there. He put some weight on up to about 235 pounds. Very, very good hands. And he's the guy, Sean, that once they get down inside the five-yard line with six rushing touchdowns, they'll use his size to their advantage. Third down and six. Design rollout is passed too high over the head of Dwayne Goins. And skates will come on to try a long field goal with the wind at his back. Mike Stoops and Brent Venable, co defensive coordinators, they confer before signaling the defense. Ultimately, it's Mike Stoops, the brother of the head coach, who makes the final call and what the defense will be. Cody Skates has plenty of legs. He leg to kick this. He kicked a 48-yarder against Baylor. He has a little bit of wind at his back. He's been inconsistent, but that was early. He's come on lately. He's been during the five of his last six he's hit. Seven out of 14 for the year. A 43-yard try. Enough distance, and it is good. The Texas A&M, nearly a three-touchdown underdog today, has a 3 nothing lead at Oklahoma in the first quarter. Quarter. Cody Skate kicks off after his 43-yard field goal. And Savage downs at about seven yards deep in the end zone. Let's head down to Leslie Goodell. Well, a and trainer Carl Smith is so busy this season, and he starts early today. Derek Farmer has a sprained left knee. It's the same knee he injured against Texas Tech. He's been on the sidelines. He's been on the bike. He also has a few scrapes on his shin. And he's not the only one out. Ty Warren, defensive lineman, earlier this week during practice, had a shoulder problem. He played one play today, and he's out for the rest of the game. Sean, that really leaves Texas A&M with three healthy.
healthy defensive lineman that they can trust. You mentioned Evan Peroni was already questionable for this game. So as this game wears on, the conditioning of that front three for Texas a and will be severely tested. Hand off to Curtis Fagan. He banged his way out near the 23-yard line, the junior from Houston, Texas. A little slow to get up as they unpile off him. Linus Smith in on the stop, and then he went off. Well, you've got to wonder for A&M with the toughest finishing stretch in all of college football at Oklahoma here today and then at home against Texas the day after Thanksgiving. All of these injuries piling up. You wonder if there'll be enough people to put on the field. And the good news for A&M, despite the information that was given to Leslie Goodell, Ty Warren is on the field right now. Playing with that shoulder injury. The pass intercepted. And then the ball comes out. It's a live ball. And a touchdown for Texas A&M. Everett Smith intercepted the pass and fumbled. Brian Gamble picked it up and ran it in. It looked like all the Sooners had stopped playing, but there was no whistle. And it is a touchdown, but now the officials are conferring near the three-yard line. John, it looked like from up here that Everett Smith had that ball locked away before he was tackled. And Oklahoma stood around. There was no whistle. I could not hear a whistle coming from the field of play. Somebody from Oklahoma needed to know that that ball was alive without a whistle and go try to make a play on it. From our vantage point, and we're as high as you can be in any broadcast booth in a football stadium in America, they, that looked like the right call to Absolutely. us. It looked like an interception, then a fumble, then it was run in. The officials have conferred. Yeah, it's a touchdown, no question. Rolling on the field is that we had an interception, followed by a fumble, which was advanced for a touchdown by Texas A&M. I think they got it right. Bob Stoops doesn't agree, and of course, none of us have yet had the benefit of instant replay, and that will change now. The biggest question will be, does Everett Smith have control of this ball before the ball is stripped out by the Oklahoma player. Hibble, a bad throw across his body. Oh, maybe he didn't. Maybe he juggled it the whole time. Did not look like he had it completely tucked away. Tough to tell from that angle. Josh Norman pulled it out for Oklahoma. That replay looked like Smith was just juggling the ball the entire time and never really did have it firmly in his grasp. Gates had the extra point. And Bob Stoops is still upset. If we can't take a look at this and see a little better angle of whether Everett Smith has a hold of the ball. Here's Everett right here. Again, tough to tell, Sean, whether that ball was tucked away or not before Josh Norman got a hold of it. Here's another angle. See, that's the angle that we had, right. and with his body obscuring the ball, it's tough to tell. If he ever had possession, the one thing you can see in that replay for sure is that one of the officials was standing right there looking right at Smith, on the front side of Smith where he was carrying the ball. And he didn't blow the whistle or rule it an incomplete pass. Well, either way, Sean, you have to know, if you don't hear that whistle blow during a play like that, assume the worst if you're Oklahoma. Somebody, Hibble, somebody in the backfield, Quentin Griffin, needs to go make a play on that ball when there's no whistle.
earlier this season, the Super Bowl champion Ravens overwhelmed the Titans. Now it's time for the rematch. Steve McNair, Eddie George, and Tennessee will be looking for payback in what should be another great AFC Central battle, the Ravens and the Titans, Monday night at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific, here on ABC. Mark Mangino calls an option play for Nate Hibble. They won't use it that much because of the health issue. They need to keep him healthy, but they do that just to make sure that the defensive end for an AM and have to play some technique assignment football. Hibble has time, has his receiver. Trent Smith, the tight end, breaks free. Out to the 46-yard line. A gain of 18 and a first down. Terrence Peel and Sammy Davis finally made the stop on the junior from Clinton, Oklahoma. With the things that Oklahoma does defensively and offensively, you kind of have to start getting new names for people. Although Trent Smith is listed as a tight end, he's really lined up over in a slot position, just running a little cross sit-down route against the zone. Very rarely does Trent Smith at 6'5", 220, line up as a true tight end, and he causes some very good mismatches with some linebackers. And it was 47 set to the year of Oklahoma tight end record. Hibble's done a nice job of being patient. There's another first down to Trent Smith. Tackled by Amon Simon. But Smith made his way to the 43-yard line of AM, the pickup of 11. And there's the mismatch that Chuck Long, the quarterback coach and pass game coordinator for Oklahoma, is sending down to Mark Mangino on the field and saying, Coach, they are not putting a safety on Trent Smith. They're putting a linebacker. We have to continue to work him in the middle of the field. And nothing. AM. Under three minutes left in the first quarter here in Norman, Oklahoma. Smith, Christian Rodriguez, who was lining up as a linebacker to cover him. And a timeout called by Nate Hibble. Coming up next, our college football doubleheader continues. You'll see one of these great regional games in the Sooner and Aggie fans, particularly interested in K-State at number two, Nebraska. Oregon at UCLA, Penn State, Illinois, or North Carolina State, Florida State. That's all coming up next on ABC. Oklahoma finally getting some kind of sustained offense. And they've done it with Trent Smith, a guy that they really discovered about four games ago. He had a stretch run in the last four ball games of 34 catches, which was an OU record in a four-game stretch. Oklahoma's won 18 in a row here at Memorial Stadium. Every game coached by Bob Stoops here, plus two. And every game since Coach Stoops has been here has been a sellout, and they'll be expanding this stadium to a capacity of about 81,000. Right now, the listed capacity is 72,000 and change, but they typically put about 75,000 in here for a home game. It is an 11 a.m. start, so most of the action of the Big 12 is later today, including K-State at Nebraska, Colorado's at Iowa State, Texas Tech coming off the win against the Aggies last week at Oklahoma State, number five Texas against Kansas, and Baylor in Missouri. With Jerry Allen out as Kansas coach, and there's a lot of speculation that some of the Oklahoma assistants are leading candidates to be the next coach of the Jayhawks, most notably Mike Stoops. Quentin Griffin, the ball carrier, on first and ten, and he got a yard, and then Rocky Bernard made the tackle. Sean, when we talked yesterday to Bob Stoops about the openings and his uh, staff moving on, of course, he's very supportive of anyone who wants to move on. Of course, he had Steve Spurrier in, in his corner when he left Florida to come here. When we were talking about when they lost Mike Leach to Texas Tech before the Independence Bowl, he said all the players were walking around with their heads down and disappointed because in the past in this program, when they lost a coach, it was because they were fired. He said, this is a positive for the program. Hippo under pressure. Incomplete pass. The fans wanted a flag because Smith got tangled up downfield for the defensive back. But there is no flag on the play. West Bodovich put the heat on on a blitz. There's a lot of holding there by Sir Aaron Keel. Now, in college football, you can have your hands on the guy before the ball is thrown as long as you're beside him or in front of him. But that ball was in the air, and Terrence Keel, a safety who now Texas a has walked over a safety to cover Smith. John, I'm a little surprised that that was not called interference. It sure looked like it on that 
Third and nine. Oh, Ball thrown up for grabs and incomplete. Looking for Mark Clayton, Sammy Davis, AM best cover corner. One of the best corners in the conference, certainly, if not the nation. And the coverage. They say he's a terrific cover guy. The AM coaches would like Sammy to be a little more physical. And that throw was a little unusual very difficult up top great coverage by sammy davis but sean this is not a pass a high percentage pass and on third and nine when you need some positive yardage to get down into some field goal range an interesting choice by hibble to go to the face fourth punt of the quarter for ferguson one of the pin the aggies deep at the three yard line good job by jeff ferguson the senior from tulsa oklahoma McDonough, Ed Cunningham, and Leslie Goodell on a gorgeous day here in Norman, Oklahoma. Martin Ferris, four out of eight for 28 yards in the first quarter. But his upset might at Aggies have a 10 0 lead. In the flat, Austin Fleming cut down by Derek Strait, the sophomore from Austin, Texas. 
Very yeah. consistent at cornerback for the Sooners. Third team all Big 12 last year as a redshirt freshman when he started every game. Fantastic call by Mike Stoops, the defensive coordinator at Oklahoma, also the defensive back coach. It looked like he was going to bring some pressure and then dropped everybody out. He dropped eight. And Ferris thought he was going to have something across the middle, was taken away by a linebacker. The only thing he could do was hit Fleming in the flat. Cody Gates with a nice punch. Curtis Fagan makes a fair catch at the 26-yard line. Well, the only touchdown in this game on a controversial play, an 18-yard fumble return by Brian Gamble, a fumble of his teammate Everett Smith after a questionable interception. But the more we look at this replay during the commercials, Ed, I think he actually has it in his possession for a moment, up against his chest, then takes a step right here, right there, before the ball comes out. Yeah, I think he did, Sean. It, again, it's tough to tell, but we thought from the very first time we saw it live that it was a catch. And when you look at that, it did look like he had established possession of the ball. Josh Norman made a nice play on it. It's just his teammates needed to play through the whistle. And the closest other person to that was an official standing right there, just a few yards away, looking right at the play. Oklahoma, first possession of the second quarter. And not much on offense so far. Just 61 yards of offense in the first quarter for the Sooners. Griffin tackled by Jesse Honeycutt and Brian Gamble. You know, Sean, when we talked to R.C. Slocum earlier this week about Oklahoma, he said, you know, I would really enjoy watching Oklahoma's defense if we didn't have to play them. If you start looking at the way his defense is playing, it has a lot of the same attributes as Frank Romero walks off, a guy that they cannot lose at left tackle. But the way his defense has been playing, you have to get a feeling that maybe he popped that tape in a few times for his defense and said, guys, look how they run around, look how they tackle, because that's the way a and playing today. Romero, second team all Big 12 last year, senior from Moore, Oklahoma, just up the road from Norman, was helped off. Chico Zumba, number 62, comes in along the offensive line now for the Sooners. And now you've got more freshmen coming in to play for Oklahoma against an A&M defense that's been changing things up. Romero, the best offensive lineman, has not given up a sack this year. If you're A&M on defense, now you've got to start bringing some pressure on guys who are just not very used to this kind of pressure. So Knocked off for the second consecutive week, and Minnesota has it going. I saw him do a leak, 15 yards to Ron Johnson. And Minnesota, who's also trying to close in, perhaps, at a shot at a ball right now, is tied Michigan. And the Gophers will need to win out to become bowl eligible. Quarterback draw, and the Aggies were not full. Hibble ran right into Evan Peroni. A senior from Houston who suffered an ankle injury in their win against Kansas State and had not played again until today. Coaches weren't sure how Peroni was going to do. He couldn't practice till Wednesday of this week. That time, very nice job. He recognized that it was a quarterback trap that Oklahoma was running. He was left unblocked, closed down on it. Now, if you're Oklahoma on offense and you see those defensive ends crashing, you might want to try a naked boot catch him down inside. Given time again, but can't find a receiver. Now does it Smith the tight end, but he's driven back. Driven back by West Bonovich. He'll give him the 41-yard line as forward progress. So a loss about a half a yard on the play. Nate Hibble has to be very, very careful about this type of throw. He's already taken one that he threw into Everett Smith's hands, who he fumbled Brian Gamble. This is the exact same kind of throw. As he starts moving out of the pocket, back across his body to the middle of the field, Sean, if he is inaccurate with that throw at all, Bodovich is right there to make the interception. He's got to start being more careful with the ball. Oklahoma 0 for 4 on third down today. And this is third down and 11. 
makes the big play, and he's come very close out on this Sooner drive to making a couple of other big plays. He almost intercepted the pass that went to Fagan when Fagan extended the ball and bounced it off the ground for the extra yard, and he nearly stripped the ball on that end around along the near sideline when Oklahoma got four additional yards after the near steal. Anquist, the coordinator, expects that kind of physical play, said he hasn't been getting it from him all year, well, he's getting it so far today. Third down, third down and ten. Hibble sings one, another inaccurate pass. Smith was open, and Hibble simply missed him and did so by a rather wide margin. And Hibble has made a couple of bad throws today back across his body to the middle of the field, and Sean, this is a walk-in touchdown. Again, slot receiver, not a tight end, runs off. Wide open. They were in a zone coverage. It was a great route by Smith. You can see how well he uses his body to start shielding people off. And Hibble just totally inaccurate on that throw. Tim Duncan, the left footer, trying a 35-yard field goal. And a nice draw right down the middle. And Oklahoma is on the board. And a 35-yarder by the senior from Clinton, Oklahoma. 10-3, Texas A&M, 9.03, less than a half. Nate Hibble was five out of six on the scoring drive. Well, the one miss looked like it was going to, at the very least, get them down near the goal line, if not be a touchdown. Ball played right, ended in a field goal by Tim Duncan. Well, that one's up and good on the kickoff. From Tim Duncan, the communications major, ABC Sports presentation of college football. Brought to you by Chevy Trucks, the most dependable, longest-lasting trucks on the road. By Aflac, ask about it at work. By the United States Marine Corps, the change is forever. And by Nokia, personalize your phone, your life, your world. Nokia connecting people. Texas A&M has been totally balanced so far in their play calling. Derek Farmer, their talented true freshman, running back out with a sprained knee. 34 keeps Joseph in there now. Be surprised if they don't con continue to try to establish that so they can also get to some play action pass. This is the 10th running play and nine passes for AM and it's dropped for a loss. The wide receiver Dwayne Goins took the handoff and Teddy Lehman, the, the defensive coaches, Brent Venable, told us this week is the fastest linebacker ever to play at Oklahoma with a 4-4-40, ran him down. All the way in the middle of the field, Lehman comes all the way back across, smelled it the whole way, and you can see why the coach is so excited about this young man out of Fort Gibson High School in Oklahoma. He was second in the 100 meters in the state championships. He has true defensive back speed as a 235-pound linebacker. Again, four receivers to the right, and right now just three defensive backs over there. And they had enough defenders to stop it for a minimal gain. Jamar Taylor knocked out of bounds of the 23. A gain of eight. They'll need seven more to get a first down. Roy Williams, one of the three defenders over there who made the tackle. And what is set up as a quad receiver set just becomes basically a blocking front for Jamar Taylor. But the receivers in front of him missed all of their blocks. Well, if you're A&M, wouldn't you try to run that formation again? Just send all four of them to stay yes, the field and see if the three can Absolutely. cover the four? Drop one over the middle late. You might catch that as well. Harris. Doesn't have enough running room to get the first down. Got across the line. Of and that's it. Chased out by Rocky Kalmus. He was one of the in a drive that Texas A&M, Sean, needed to do something with some time of possession. Remember, there was a 12-play drive, the drive before, that their defense was on the field. Some linemen are banged up for Texas A&M. You can feel the crowd getting back into it a little bit. A&M needed something offensively, not a three and out against this Oklahoma defense. Despite the lack of offense again today, the touchdown was scored on defense. A&M still has the lead, but it's not going to last long. It's they can't start moving the ball. Flag down on the run back. Nifty patience by Curtis Fagan. Waited for a hole to appear. Finally, Cody skates the punter. Made the tackle. He has 14 career tackles. He's 
not afraid to run down there in coverage and put a hit on somebody. It's a hold during the run back. Instead of starting at the A&M 44-yard line, the Sooners will begin this possession in their own territory. Looks like they got John Connor, a backup wide receiver, for holding right in the middle of the field. Holding by the receiving team, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Midway through the second quarter, Bob Stoops and the Sooners down by seven. If they could win out, including a win in the Big 12 Conference Championship game, they would almost certainly play in the National Championship game with a chance to defend that title. Hibble wants to go quickly and does. Savage first down. Down to the 44-yard line of Texas A&M. Terrence Keel and Adam Black, a couple of defensive backs, made the stop after a gain of 14. When we talked to Mark Mangino and Chuck Long, the passing game coordinator and the offensive coordinator, respectively, that Antoine Savage right there in the middle of the three-receiver set. Again, a very nice job by Josh Norman, a big receiver at 6'2", 235, getting a block, excuse me, 233, getting a block down the field. But Savage doesn't look the part. He has an unusual gait when he runs. He doesn't look like he's that fast, but he just makes up ground as he's moving. They all design keep again, and they smother him. A loss on the play back near the 46. Rocky Bernard and Christian Rodriguez ready for that. We're ready for another update from John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. John, Michigan trying to position themselves to be the Big Ten champions facing Minnesota. They get the block here. Tyrese Butler blocked it. John Shaw picks it up and recovers it. And that sets up a two-yard touchdown run by B.J. Askew, 14-7. And here it's 10 to 3, Texas A&M, as we approach six minutes left. And whistle stop the action. Sean, you go back to the play before. That's the third time that Mark Mangino has called a quarterback keeper. Not an option. Ball start on the offense. Five yards, still second down. And Hibble is not as athletically gifted at running the ball as Jason White was. But you have to start wondering how many times they really want this quarterback to get hit because if he carries the ball as a running back, unless he goes in untouched for the touchdown, he's going to take a shot. Here's the second penalty of the game against Oklahoma. Able carried again and then pitched it to Griffin. Another flag thrown. Griffin down short of the 40-yard line. They'll spot him out back at the 44. Flag thrown on the defensive backfield. The option of play that they will just run again because with the way A&M plays on the outside with their outside backers and defensive ends, they just don't want them to have a free rush. An illegal chop block is the call against Oklahoma. And they changed that rule last year that it doesn't have to be a high and then a low block. If one guy is high and one guy is low, it doesn't matter the sequence that it happens. <laughs> Take a look in the replay and see if we can see what the call was. Look down. Oh, the call was on, okay, I understand why they made that call. It was on Mark Clayton, the wide receiver. If he's moving back in towards the line of scrimmage, he cannot go low on a block. Again, that was a rule change last year for the batter. By the offense, 15 yards from the end of the run, still second down. Again, anybody who's moving towards the middle of the field, back. Here's Clayton right here. Because he's moving back in, and it looks like he's going against Bodovich right there, he cannot cut low. It was a good rule change made last year by the NCAA, and a heads-up call by the official. That's tough to see that far away from the ball. Ball all the way back to the Oklahoma 41. They need to reach the A&M 34 for a first down. 
39-yard punt, no return. Time now for our Pacific Life game summary. And the difference in the game is this play. Everett Smith with an interception. The Sooners felt he never had possession of it. He fumbled. Ryan Gamble picks it up and ran it in to make it 10-0 A&M. The Tim Duncan field goal made it 10-3. And that's where we are with 332 left in the half. Each team with two timeouts left. And again, great field position for Oklahoma at the Aggies 46. Hibble on the inside handoff to Quentin Griffin. And Rocky Bernard made the tackle. If you're Oklahoma, obviously you'd like to run this clock all the way out in with a touchdown, but you have to be careful, Sean. You haven't been getting 
much going offensively. They had that 112 play drive that ended in the field goal, but Mark Mangino during that drive, they mixed it up quite a bit. They got Trent Smith to tight end. I wouldn't worry about the clock right now. Just run your whole offense and try to get this guy back in ball. Griffin nine carries, 29 yards. Hibble again giving time. And his pass is nowhere near Curtis Gagan. That was about 10 to 15 yards over his head. Hagan was cutting it across the middle. And apparently Hibble thought he was going to head in a different direction. But what a really nice call by Mike Hankwitz, the defensive coordinator for AM. Brought some pressure up the middle, but was able to drop out and get double coverage on Josh Norman. And that's who Nate Hibble was looking at early when he came back to his check down. Obviously, he thought Fagan was going to the post and Fagan was running across him out. That's why that looked so ugly. Third down. And eight. Hibble. Just a little bit too long. Off his fingertips at the 12-yard line. He got behind Adam Black, who had the coverage. But Hibble just a little bit off with that throw. That was an absolute replay of the play before. Mark Mangino obviously got some information from Chuck Long that, hey, we've got the post open to Fagan right here running. He ran the crossing route last time, the exact same blitz by Texas A&M. Hank Woods figures, hey, it worked one time, we'll use it again. But Hibble... Just a little bit of pressure from that blitz, so it's too early. Ferguson got a little bit too much of that one. Into the end zone. 44-yard punt, but a net of 24 on the sixth punt of the half for Oklahoma and Jeff Ferguson. Monday night at 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific here on ABC. A great AFC Central battle, and this has become a terrific rivalry in recent years. The Super Bowl champion... Baltimore Ravens against the Tennessee Titans trying to get their act together after the slow start. Well, and this defense for Texas A&M has looked like the Baltimore Ravens from 2000. Oklahoma has only had one sustained drive and once again gives R.C. Ar Slocum's offense the ball back with plenty of time on the clock, two timeouts, and the ability to do anything they want offensively. The Aggies have just three first downs but lead 10-3. to three. The defense scored the touchdown. Keith Joseph to the 22, and that's it. Rocky Calmus with another tackle. He started the day needing seven tackles to reach 100 for the third straight season. And he has seven. That was his seventh. So 100 tackles for the season for Calmus. And he needs one more now to catch Brian Bosworth on the all-time tackles list. He has 394 in his career. Bosworth has 395, fifth in Oklahoma history. Whoa! Intercepted the pass, batted down by Jimmy Wilkerson. The defensive end alert to that quick pass. Receiver trying to cut back toward the middle of the field, and Wilkerson batted it down. One thing I noticed when I was watching Jimmy Wilkerson yesterday on Coach's film was how well, here he is on the top of your screen, how well he uses his hands. That time, the offensive tackle, Andre Brooks, goes for a cut block because they're going to run a screen over to that side to the wide receiver, number 83, Mickey Jones. Wilkerson so good with his long arms, using them to defend himself against that cut and then batting it down. And the Aggies play it conservatively. Stacy Jones, the ball carrier, he's almost exclusively a blocker. As a matter of fact, that's the first time he has carried the ball since last October 21st. Last season at Iowa State, it's just his seventh career carry, and it was Rocky Kalmus who had the tackle to tie Brian Bosworth. For fifth all-time in tackles at Oklahoma, 395 each. And Bob Scoops decides to use a timeout wisely, and Sean, I don't like that conservative call by Texas A&M. I understand you're on the road, you're up by seven, but handing the ball off to someone who's never carried the ball since last October is too conservative, I think. I think you got to go for the jugular. I think they'd like to get into the locker room ahead 10 to three and see if they can find a way to get this offense going. 
A&M has had seven possessions in the game. Five of them have been three and out. And that's nothing new as far as this Oklahoma defense is concerned. They came into today's game having forced three and outs from the opponents just under 51% of the time. That was the first thing when we talked to Dino Babers, the offensive coordinator at A&M. The very first thing he brought up in our conversation on Wednesday was that is the most impressive statistic of Oklahoma is how quickly they get off the field. Starting today's game, Oklahoma of Oklahoma had had 142 possessions this season that did not end in a scoring play or the expiration of the half. And of those drives, 73 of them did not yield a first down. 50.73 and out. BCS lineup today. You saw the Nebraska in action later today. Here at ABC, the punter's in trouble. And Skiggs is buried back at the 14-yard line. They're whistling the play down, even though the ball was advanced out to the 21. Derek Street and Antoine Savage in on Skates. And Oklahoma takes over at the 14-yard line. Straight on the outside, and Savage coming on the inside. Skates had no chance to get that ball off. Straight got such a good jump from the outside and beat his man that Skates just tried to pull it down and do anything he could. Watch how quickly Straight gets in there, and then Savage does a really nice job of coming off the block and going in for the tackle. A heads-up play by an offensive player. Skates had the ball off to Terrence Keel, but the officials ruled that Skates' forward progress had been stopped, so the ball is spotted on the 14-yard line. First and 10 Sooners. The touchdown, the extra point to tie it with a minute 40 left. Stepped it and went to two to the 12-yard line. Evan Peroni and Wes Bonovich combined on the stop. One timeout left for Oklahoma and two for AM. and And this is the point where on defense for Texas A&M, we practice this all the time. It's called the quick change defense. They were expecting to go in and have more than half of the field to defend. Now they have to get themselves up, immediately go in the red zone and turn it off. They will again with plenty of time. They can't find a receiver. And he throws it away. Finally, the pressure came from Linus Smith. Well, neither offense has been good here in the first half. Texas A&M with 75 yards of total offense, matching the passing yardage for Hibble here in the half, a total of 121 yards of offense for Oklahoma. Now at third and eight from the 14-yard line, able to pick up the first down. You've got to throw something near the goal line to get inside the first down marker and give your guy a chance to sneak it in for the touchdown, but the first down is key. On third and eight from the 12. Kibble to the end zone. Touchdown, Antoine Savage. reception of the day for Antoine Savage, who was also a part of the play on the punt, putting the pressure on skates. And the extra point to tie it up now. Fourth touchdown reception of the year for Savage. Tim Duncan. And the hold of Matt McCoy. The new holder with the injury to Jason White. They were tied at 10 with 59 seconds left in the first half. The Sooners have come back from 10-0 down. Top receiver gets passed off, and the deep man makes a horrible decision not to run with Savage. The tight corner came up to cover into the flat, and the safety over the top in zone coverage made a bad decision. That looked like Sean Weston, who was trying to cover over the top, and that was just not good zone coverage deep in the red zone. Taking advantage of the short field, three plays, and the 13-yard touchdown pass to Antoine Savage, the junior from Albany, Georgia. So a couple of Georgians hooking up on that touchdown. Nate Hibbles from Hazelhurst, Georgia. 
When he was in high school, he was three times All-State as a golfer. And his brother Ryan plays on the Bulldogs golf team right now. Has that competitive fire of a competitive golfer. Seems to maybe have calmed himself down. A confidence builder like that, Sean, can go a long way in the second half. Line drive kickoff picked up by Mickey Jones. And he made his way to the 31. 53 seconds left and two timeouts for the Aggies. But the way it's gone offensively, Ed, you'd think they'd be content to get into the locker room tied and try to find a way to get this offense, which did not score last week. It has really just three points on the board today because the seven came on a defensive score. They need to find a way to get that offense in gear. Well, and, you know, the conservative call hurt them on the time before on third and long. They ran the fullback dive and then got the punt blocked. And they're coming out in a conservative formation, two backs, but I don't know that you at least try one or two play action to try to hit something down the middle of the field, pick up a first down and stop the clock. And certainly a very conservative handoff to the fullback, Joe Weber. And it looks like they are going to be content to go into the locker room at 10-10. They're in no real hurry to get back to the line of scrimmage. And there's no way that Oklahoma could get the ball back, so no reason to burn the last time out. But you're right, Sean. There's a lot of things that they've got to get ironed out on this offense. I mean, let's not forget who they're playing against, one of the best defenses in the country, and has played that way today. But I think they need to take the wraps off and take a few shots down the field in the second half to at least try to make a big play. Weber again. Rocky Kalmus. Another tackle. On what is going to be the last play of the half. Slocum and the Aggies in a surprise had a 10-0 lead with the offense virtually non-existent for AM. and they couldn't maintain that lead. 10-10 at the break. Here's Leslie with Bob Stoops. Coach, I know you'd probably like to see a little bit more out of your offense, but you go in tight at the half. What do you want in the second half? Well, some execution offensively. We're, we've really been poor uh, with penalties and lack of execution. Defense is playing uh, really well. Kicking game's been solid. I uh, need to get something going offensively. What about Nate Hibble and his play so far? Uh, it's been pretty, uh, it isn't all Nate Hibble. Our offense has been pretty average to this point, and it isn't all Nate. It's a lot of people, uh, whether it be blocking, catching the football, getting open. Uh, we need to be better at everything. Thanks, Coach. ABC Sports presentation of college football will return after this message and a word from our ABC station. At the half, Texas A&M with only three first downs, 77 yards of offense, but still tied at 10 with Oklahoma. Welcome back to Norman. Sean McDonough along with Ed Cunningham. And then we talked at the top of the telecast about the interesting matchup. Seth McKinney, the four-year starter at center for the Aggies against Tommy Harris, the true freshman for Oklahoma. And we were watching in the whole first half, and Seth McKinney really played a great half. The only thing, Sean, that Texas A&M got going was that quick little fullback dive, and the reason was was because of the battle we saw between a fourth-year starter for Texas A&M and a true freshman. And the way that Seth McKinney got it going was keeping his pads down. Even though Harris comes off the block there, they got movement. Then the double team with Whitley. Again, Harris fighting for everything he has. And then McKinney and Whitley take Harris to the ground. And then the fourth-year senior says, hey, freshman, you got a little bit to learn about playing in the Big 12 Conference. Tim Duncan will kick off to start the second half. Very little breeze in the stadium at the moment. What little breeze there is is at the back of Duncan. He'll kick it away to Terrence Thomas and Mickey Jones. There's Jones standing at the two-yard line. Line drive kick. Out of the back of the end zone by Duncan. Let's check in with Leslie Goodell. Sean, I talked with R.C. Slocum after the half, and he said big plays. The same thing he said before the game started. They needed to make big plays. He has a lot of respect for this Oklahoma defense. In terms of Mark Ferris, he needs to be the guy that's going to make those big plays. They've tried. They haven't gotten it done. And he said the biggest play of the first half was that long punt at the end of the half. come out into a shotgun formation really was the fullback dive. They need to set up some kind of play action pass and try to get some one-on-one -on -one outside to their fantastic freshman Terrence Martin. And full 
fullback Weber rushed for 35 yards. He had 35 of their 77 yards of offense. Very little on that play to Terrence Murphy. They do go right away to the true freshman. Or a gain of three. Antonio Perkins and Roy Williams combining on the stop. Time now for the Morgan Stanley well-connected storyline. Joe Weber is the fullback, 42 yards. They got a lot of that when they were coming out deep from their own. The only touchdown for AM was the 18-yard fumble returned by Gamble. And Hibble, although a little shaky at times, was able to get a few things going together with his uh, Trent Smith, his tight end. Out of the gun. The handoff to Austin Fleming. He's out across the 25. For those who might have joined us late, very early in the game, Derek Farmer, the Leading rusher for the Aggies, the two freshmen, took a hit on the knee and has not returned. So their leading rusher out of action, adding to the already amazingly long list of team injuries endured by Texas A&M this year. Now you play right into Oklahoma's hands. Third and five is really a third and long against this defense. Got pretty soft coverage up here on top. See if you can't get a slant or something quick into the first down. Harris with just a four-man rush. Throws quickly, but way off the mark. Looking for Jamar Taylor. Harris now seven for 14 passing. He's thrown for just 38 yards. This Oklahoma defense, Sean, has such good recovery speed. That time he had what he wanted open. Ferris did. But because it gets out a little late and just that tiny little bit of pressure where he has to throw it just to count before he wants to, makes it an incomplete pass. He's hunting for the sixth time. This will be the sixth punt for each team. Good punt. Drives big and back to the 24. Breaks two tackles, and finally the Aggies get him on the ground at the 36-yard line. A 12-yard return of a 51-yard punt. ABC Sports presentation of college football is brought to you by Morgan Stanley, formerly Morgan Stanley Dean Witter. Move your money, get well connected. By Chevy, the cars you can depend on, the cars that last, we'll be there. And by Burger King, home of the Whopper. They've hit Nate Hibble, got a little bit of confidence going on that last drive after the block punt. Had a nice throw to Antoine Savage, a blown coverage by Texas A&M. It was a little shaky, Sean. He made some bad throws back across his body. And in a 10-10 ball game at home, it's all going to come down to who protects the ball the best. He's got to be very careful with his decisions and where he goes with it. Hibble started up 4 for 10 with an interception in the first quarter. 7 out of 12 in the second quarter. And he's on target with his first throw of the third quarter to Curtis Bagan. Sean Weston made the tackle. Just shy of a first down. They got about nine and a half. This is where A&M really needs that front. For them in their four alignment, they bring a lot of pressure with their outside linebackers. Rod Penwright leads the Big 12 in sacks. They have two sacks already, 35 on this even season for Texas A&M. Mike Anquist's defense, very good at disguising things. Some kind of pressure and a turnover to get this offense going for A&M. And second and short, a first for Oklahoma. Quentin Griffin carried across midfield to the 49-yard line of the Aggies. Rod Penwright took him down there. You know, if you go all the way back to 1999, when Quentin Griffin was a true freshman for Bob Stoops. They were going to try to redshirt him, but they had a lot of injuries at the running back position. He had to play. Now a junior, and you go back to that year, obviously no choice for Bob Stoops at the time, but how nice would it be for him to be a sophomore in this program? Hibble, all day to throw. Throw a beauty. Robertson made the tackle. That was the most confident-looking throw of the day for Nate Hibble. And it helps when Trent Smith, again, lined up in the slot here. It's going to come all the way across. They had a blitz on. And then the linebacker, Harold Robertson, late getting into his drop, does not go with the crossing route. But just an excellent job of Hibble seeing what the defense did 
brought the linebacker, and that is a complete mismatch. The way Trent Smith runs his routes, he is so active, continues to move, knows where to go in that coverage, and there was no way that Harold Robertson was going to get back in cover. Ball spot to the 22, a gain of 27. Fourth catch of the day for Smith. Now Griffin, taken down by his fellow number 22, Sammy Davis. But another good gain inside the 15. They'll mark it at the 14-yard line, second down and two. And a lot of people talk about size, Sean, you know, five foot seven. But watch how Griffin gets in here and hides just for the second with Romero and the big left guard, Howard Duncan. He hides back in there. And the good block coming from the backside by the wide receiver. But that's when a five foot seven guy really gets in there a bunch uh, amongst a bunch of six four and six five guys. There's no way the defense can find him. The option, Hibble forced to pitch it to Griffin. Little shake and bake move to get the first down. At the 10-yard line, Ramon Simon made the tackle. Lead block from Antoine Savage on the far side of the field. And you're going back to the Barry Switzer days, your wide receivers. You're going to see Savage come in from your outside. That's Trent Smith lined up in the slot. But so key are the wide receivers. You don't have to get a very big block. You just have to get in the way. You go back to the Barry Switzer days when those wide receivers really were just glorified blockers. And it's something they brought back to the offense, especially down in the red zone for Oklahoma. On first and goal, a handoff to Savage, and he's thrown for a loss back at the 15-yard line. Well played by Harold Robertson, the senior from Dallas. Out of Lincoln High School, Marcus Jasmine also involved in the play. And Sean, this is, you know, Oklahoma has been down in the red zone several times against AM and they tend to go backwards. That time, that play just took so long to develop. It wasn't really a fake. They didn't show much of a flow to the right side of the field. Everybody was home for AM. Now, second and goal from the 15. That's tough sledding uh, in the red zone against this defense. A room for the passing game, however. Only in the stretch formation, the three receivers to the left, dribbled through to the left, and hit immediately was Antoine Savage by Adam Black. It'll be third and goal from the 10. This is one of the drives early in the third quarter that would go a long way. If you could give some breathing room to your defense, a seven-point lead instead of a three-point lead, then Oklahoma's defense, which is very active for Bob Stoops, could even become more active and start taking more risks. So really early in the game, a big down here in the red zone. The receiver to the right now of Hibble on third and goal from the 10. Looked like Norman was pondering his path to the end zone before he secured the football. Dropped it near the six-yard line. Unlikely that he would have gotten into the end zone even if it caught it with several defenders nearby and Sean you know you always hear people talk about why would you throw something before the goal line with that kind of coverage they didn't even have anybody running a route into the end zone on third and ten from uh, third third and ten from the uh, third and goal from the ten yard line you've got to get something into the corner of the end zone and maybe a crossing route across the back Duncan 27 yard field goal try to give Oklahoma its first lead of the afternoon it's a fit they throw it he needs to score a touchdown. They cannot get a first down. He's tripped up. What's the call? Touchdown! Sean, I don't think he made it. It looked like from up here, like Duncan's knee was down before he stretched out and got across the goal line. Matt McCoy, the new holder, a reserve defensive back, threw it out to Duncan. And if Duncan made it before his knee hit the ground, it was just barely, and the official hesitated a moment before the call. Officially, it's a 10-yard run because it was a lateral. Uh, his knee's no, down he's way down. before That's that a horrible ball went across. I, th I think the official was swayed by the crowd in that end zone. Well, if Oklahoma felt, and the Sooners did, that they got a bad call on the Texas A&M touchdown, they might be even now. 7 left in the third quarter. The Sooners lead for the first time on this controversial touchdown. No way is that a score. Curtis oh, Graham, the headlinesman 
The man in the spotlight at Memorial Stadium at the moment. He was the official who signaled the touchdown on the fake field goal a moment ago. We'll take another look at it after the kickoff by Duncan who scored the touchdown. And that is officially a 10-yard run. Well, it was tough to tell if it was a bad call when AM scored its touchdown on defense. It is not tough to tell that this is a terrible call as Oklahoma scores on special teams. Sean, we're as far away as we can be from the field, and we could tell Knee down. it's that ball goes the other way. First down, 10 yards to go from the one-yard line for Texas AM. And this will be clearly evident. And you can see the official running stride for stride. Knee down, the ball still on, nowhere near the goal line. Close. Now it is. Yep. Just a horrible call against Texas AM. And a big one. It gave Oklahoma the lead. Now the Aggies will try to get something going on offense. That's been a familiar refrain for a few weeks now. Joe Weber got two on first down. Jimmy Wilkerson made the tackle. Here's John Saunders at Times Square Stadium. Sean, here with the Burger King update. It's turning into an unbelievable game up in Boston here. Brian St. Pierre to Sean Ryan. Eight yards for the touchdown. That's the first touchdown of the game. Boston College pulls within two of number one. And of course, the Eagles playing with out their Dolph Walker candidate running back William Green suspended for one game for a violation of team rules. He was the leading rusher in the nation. Ferris throws it up. The ball's caught. Looked like a push off. There is a flag down. And it looked like Jamar Taylor, the receiver, was guilty of offensive pass interference. As he shoved Antonio Perkins away. If you're Oklahoma, you might as well go ahead and decline this penalty, make it third and long. Do they call it an incompletion? Yes, he didn't yes, catch it did. anyway. No question that that was pass interference, though. You can't blame Taylor for trying, though. I mean, the ball, it's great coverage down the field by Antonio Perkins. Might as well go ahead and give it a shot and force the official to make the call. understand why Bob Stoops accepted this penalty, Sean, but as bad as Texas A&M has played offensively, able to get nothing done, I don't know that you don't go for the third and eight, get one more play, get your offense back on the field. Well, as bad as the offense has been, I think he's figuring they can't even get the penalty out of that. That's a good and point as well. <laughs> Really midway through the third quarter, 83 yards of offense for Texas A&M. Ferris brings it out. Weber lowers his shoulder and goes out near the 18-yard line. Perkins and Williams made the tackle. Not a lot of weapons with which to work for Mark Ferris, 26-year-old quarterback. Many of you know his story. He signed a letter of intent with A&M out of high school in 1994, but then was drafted by the Pittsburgh Pirates in the first round. The 11th pick overall that year. He decided to sign and play minor league baseball. Got a bonus of more than $800,000. You know who was taking one pick behind him that year in the draft? Number 12 pick overall in 1994? Nomar Garcia Park. He's worked out okay, hasn't he? Harris went to pick ahead of Garcia Park. He runs. Takes a shot in the back at the 21-yard line. Jimmy Wilkerson put a lick on him. And against, Still just the three first downs for Texas A&M and another punt. And against this defense, you've got to figure that Mark Ferris wishes he was back playing minor league baseball at this time. He pursued minor league baseball, made it as far as double-A. Shortstop, third baseman, first baseman. Coach Slocum kept in touch him the entire time when the time was right. A couple of seasons ago, Ferris returned the football. Gates just got that one off. A couple of bounces in each direction, and finally it's down to the 46-yard line. 33-yard punt. Oklahoma on offense with a seven-point lead right after this. Touchdowns in this game, only one scored by an offense. Oklahoma scored an offensive touchdown. They've also scored on special teams, while the AM defense put the only touchdown on the board for the Aggies. 
Oklahoma with the lead for the first time after the big field goal resulted in a controversial touchdown. And the Sooners have the ball back at their own 46. Give a lot of the shotgun. Just a three-man rush, but it's enough as they sack him back at the 36-yard line. Bull rush by Rocky Bernard. The one part of Oklahoma's offense that has been beat up because of injury. We've talked a lot about Texas A&M, but it's been an offensive tackle. Up top, you've got a freshman, Gerard Fields, working one-on-one. -on -one. And that's just a good inside power rush that time by Rocky Bernard. Nothing fancy. Ran him over. But Fields got his feet tangled up, and because Bernard had that inside power hand, he was able to topple him over and go to the quarterback. Third sack for Texas A&M. Second down and 20. They come on a blitz. Bonovich with safety. Chasing after Hibble. He gets rid of it, and it's caught. Back of the 46-yard line by Antoine Savage. Good work by Hibble under a lot of heat. They get it away for a 10-yard game, so they got the sack yardage back. It'll be third down and 10. And even though you know a lot of people in Oklahoma upset that Jason White's out for the season because of his athleticism, Nate Hibble is no slouch himself. That was a fantastic job. Wes Bonovich came completely clean from his safety position on a blitz. And a very nice job of Hibble buying himself enough time knowing he had the comeback route. Oklahoma on third down. A&M is one for ten. And a combined three for twenty on third down today. Very little rush. And the ball is almost intercepted. Run in a double coverage and knocked down by Sean Weston and Sammy Davis. The receiver was Mark Clayton. And the A&M defensive backfield today, Sean, has played extremely well, even when ex Texas A&M has brought pressure, which they have on considerable long down and distance yardage plays. They've done a fantastic job on those three wide receiver sets of figuring out who's rubbing off whom and who they need to pick up. That, again, was a very nice job by them back there, sorting out who was who. Tiger defense has played well for A&M. Loma scored a touchdown. Let him go, let him go. Watch, punch. Texas A&M and scored another touchdown on a fake field goal. This is a very good punt by Jeff Ferguson. The field position has been bad for most of the day for the Aggies, too. A 43-yard punt down to the 11th. Results in a gain of five. Keith Joseph, the ball carrier. Time now for the answer to our Aflac trivia question. You've had plenty of time to cheat if you are like Ed Cunningham or think about it. If you're like the rest of us honest souls, who was the only Oklahoma Sooner who has won the Jim Thorpe Award? I'm not going to say it. it? I, yeah, I cheat. I can't, I can't take it. Well, if you thought of the book, you would have said Ricky Dixon <laughs> in 1987. Because he hit me in the knuckles with your ruler. And Roy Williams, a leading candidate for that award this year. Joseph again upended at the 18-yard line by Roy Williams. When we asked Dino Babers, the offensive coordinator for AM, about Roy Williams, he said, wow. <laughs> First word out of his mouth. And that kind of says it all when you watch him play. Well, it is so hard to account for this guy. He plays in so many different positions on the field. He's so aggressive towards the line of scrimmage. The only thing that you have a chance, here he is right here. I mean, he's basically playing a linebacker, trying to get him sucked up and throw over the top. And there he comes in to make the tackle. And stop the ball carrier short of a first down. They needed the 21. It looked like Joseph was stopped right at the 20. He had another three and out for Texas A&M. Look at the explosion to the hole. He meets the running back where the running back sees the hole. A good, strong safety 
uses his eyes to look at the play the exact same way that the running back does. See where the seam is. That was a little cutback, and Williams was there to kill it. Cody Skate. Fielded by Fagan at the 42. Breaks a tackle. And takes it to the AM 49. Chance Pierce, the long snapper, made the tackle. 38-yard punt, 9-yard return. Check out our Pacific Life game summary. There certainly have been some unusual and controversial plays in this game, both resulting in touchdowns. There was an interception that was fumbled and run in. 18 yards and in this big field goal. Where it looked like he was down. He clearly was down short of the end zone. But they gave him the touchdown after a moment's hesitation. The signal went up. Tim Duncan, the field goal kicker with a 10-yard run. Really a shame, as well as AM's defense has played today, that they had to get a cheap one snuck in on him like that. Dibble flush, but now he has running room. A couple of nice moves, and he slides down with a first down at the 38-yard line. Sammy Davis credited with the stop, but it's a gain of 11 for Hibble. So difficult for this AM defense because of the struggles of their offense and just trying to find some kind of identity. They've been on the field so much. They've worked so hard on conditioning. But they've got so many guys banged up, banged up up front, Sean, that they just don't have fresh bodies to rotate in for Mike Hankwitz so that he can get that power rush all the time. Maybe the Aggies should leave the defense on the field when they have the ball on offense and take their chance. Quentin Griffin, the ball carrier. To the 35 for a gain of three. Here's Leslie Goodell. You guys talk about the injuries. Here's the laundry list of them. Four tight ends missing, two wide receivers. They've had every one of their offensive tackles miss at least a game. All but one defensive lineman missed a game. They've had a spleen injury, broken foot, ACL, two disc herniations, four MCLs. Toss in your average muscle strains, and they are a complete mess. And a partridge and a pear tree. And they've had it all. Second and seven. More today, as you saw Derek Farmer, the latest to join the injured list. Cutting across the middle, the tight end, Smith. But a very short gain to the 32-yard line. And the conclusion of today's game will select the Chevrolet player of the game from each team. Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. What a nice game Wes Bodovich has played at that free safety spot. He's third start in his third game in a row because of the injury to Jay Brooks, uh, who came into Texas A&M as a walk-on quarterback, transferred in from Texas A&M Kingsville, but he has played sensationally from blitzing, covering that time, a nice job on Smith. Hibble throws, first down. Dagan fighting for every inch down at the 24-yard line. On third and four, the Sooners convert. Byron Jones finally able to get Dagan down. And Curtis blew a tire. And the exchange has to go to the sideline to put his shoe back on. Top receiver runs off. Very nice route. See how physical he is with his hands, using that slap to come on. You have to sell it to the outside. Again, Fagan, not the fastest guy out there, but he has the ability to use a couple of moves and use his hands. And, Sean, you're starting to see Hibble calm himself down a little bit. He's starting to throw the ball a lot more accurately than he did in the first half. Two to one yardage edge for Oklahoma. Hibble pitches it. It's bobbled and then caught by Josh Norman. Still on his feet. Finally collared at the 19 yard line. Let's get an update at Times Square Stadium. Here's John. Sean, Tennessee facing Memphis and Casey Clawson going to work here looking for Jason Witten. Stands in the pocket. Fires this one just now. I'm not sure whether or not. The outside foot went down first. It looked that way. The officials didn't see it that way, so it's a touchdown. Seven to nothing is the lead for Tennessee. All over the country today, some <laughs> calls for the officials. Second down and four. Kibble dragging the would-be tackler, Marcus Jasmine. Brian Gamble with him. Top short of a first down. Get another third down. This one is a short third and about two. And 
I still have to go back to that looked like it was designed quarterback draw. How many times do you want Nate Hibble with Jason White done for the season, going in for ACL surgery? How often do you want him to get hit? I mean, I know it's part of your offense, and I understand that you want to do that type of thing, but I think Mark Mangino and Chuck Long have to start considering protecting the quarterback by their play calls. Oklahoma, number three in the BCS standings at the moment, will take a seven-point lead for the fourth quarter. ABC Sports presentation of college football returned after this message and word from our ABC station. Don McDonough, Ed Cunningham, Leslie Goodell, our producer Bruce Clark, our director David Kiviot, delighted to have you with us. Spectacular November afternoon here in Norman, Oklahoma, the temperature near 70 degrees. Oklahoma fell behind 10 to nothing. The Sooners now lead 17 to 10 as the final 15 minutes of regulation begin. And another third down. Third and a short two. Griffin. Still on his feet. And finally put on the ground at the four-yard line. Looked like he was going to be down with just the necessary yardage to get the first down. Then he squirted out of the tackle of Evan Peroni, and it took Terrence Keel to make the stop. This is why this guy is so good down around in the red zone, down on the goal line. So good with his balance. There, the right hand goes down. That's a drill running backs do every day in practice. The balance drill, put the hand on the ground. He's so close to the ground to begin with. What a nice job. He put his hand on the ground, and the umpire put his hand on Griffin's helmet. There's Griffin up the middle again. <laughs> Got a yard, perhaps a yard and a half. It'll be second and goal. And the way this a and offense is playing it, they haven't had a first down since the first quarter. The seven-point lead seems huge for Oklahoma. Any kind of score here is going to make it very, very difficult for the Aggies with the dreadful offense they've exhibited the last couple of weeks. Oklahoma has found a little bit of rhythm offensively, even though in a shotgun formation, wouldn't be surprised, some kind of draw. Hibble, plenty of time. Going to run for it. And what's the signal this time? Touchdown again. Oklahoma looked a lot like Tim Duncan, the place kicker's lunge for the goal line. And Hibble hit the ground. The ball squirted out, but apparently it already broken the plane. Sean, I don't like the way he's grabbing his shoulder either, the way he got up. Remember, he hurt his shoulder. See that left arm, how he's got it cradled in there? He hurt that against Texas. And as he gets hit by Linus Smith and Jesse Honeycutt, I think he might have fell wrong again. I've been saying the entire game, they've got to start protecting this young man. He no longer has Jason White as his backup. It is a touchdown. Nice effort for him to stretch out and hit the pylon. But he, I didn't like the way he was carrying that left arm coming off the field. Duncan makes it a 14-point lead. Flag down on the extra point. Take a look at the touchdown run again. You thought for sure he was in, huh, without the knee going down? Oh, and you might be right again, Sean. Very close uh, again. Be a first time for anything. <laughs> might have been a roughing the kicker play on the extra point because they are not going to have them do it over again. So it's against a and &M. Well, let's just say this, Sean. It was a lot closer than Tim Duncan's dive that we knew was down, probably outside of the one-yard line before he got across. Let's go back and look at the extra point now and see if we can find the penalty. And they're trying to do anything they can to get a big play. Coming off the edge. Running into the kicker. <laughs> Running into the kicker on the defense. Decline. Extra point stand. No carryover. 13.56 remaining in the fourth quarter. Oklahoma trying to go to 9 and 1 overall for the year. 14 point lead. Duncan going into the win. The line drive kickoff handled by Mickey Jones. And he struggles out near the 30 yard line. Mark 
Slayton in on the stop. Antoine Savage, the starting receivers, also there. ABC Sports presentation of college football brought to you by Chrysler. Drive equals love. By Pacific Life, annuities, insurance, investments, discover the power of Pacific Life. By Budweiser, with a crisp, clean, refreshing taste you'll find in no other beer. And by Thrifty Rental Car. Great cars, great rates, at more than 1,200 locations worldwide. Thrifty Rental Car. Texas A&M comes out in the shotgun with two backs next to Ferris, obviously in for protection. They have to start getting the ball down the field with a vertical passing game. Now this isn't really doing much good. They've had three possessions in this half, all three even three and outs. Eight out of ten full possessions, excluding the one that ended the half when they ran just two plays, have been three downs and out for this awful Texas A&M offense the last couple of weeks, besieged by injuries. Done very little. And I understand, you know, you don't have a lot of the guys out there that you want experience-wise, but at some point, you have to let an experienced quarterback. I mean, Mark Ferris broke the Texas A&M record last year with over 2,500 yards passing. you got to just let him air it out. He throws quickly with a blitz coming, and the ball is on the ground. And they're ruling the receiver had a catch, and then he was down, and another official says incomplete. Terrence Murphy, the receiver, Roy Williams picked it up and ran it in. The linesman on the near side ruled it down, and then as you saw, the back judge came running in and said incomplete pass. Tom Pringle, the line judge, said catch and then down. And the back judge, Mark Johnson, waved off the catch. No catch. Good mm -hmm. call by the back judge. Very close by Terrence Murphy. Don't, let's not forget that he never played wide receiver before this year. His freshman year at Texas A&M, he has very good hands. He worked very hard during the summer, but that was the right call. That was a drop. Yes, it was. Third down and nine. Ferris out of the gun. They haven't had a first down since the final minute of the first quarter. They have three for the game. And there's another. First first down since the first quarter on the completion of Terrence Thomas, the true freshman from Houston. Antonio Perkins, a redshirt freshman, had the coverage, a gain of 14. Terrence Thomas, a true freshman, he's in there because of his speed. The fastest recruit that they had this year. Of course, a lot of these guys they were not counting on, hoping to redshirt this year. But this guy, Thomas, needs to be in there to help stretch the field vertically so they can get their possession receivers, Taylor and Murphy, underneath. The first catch of the day for Thomas. Ferris trying to set up a screen. And it is stopped at the line of scrimmage. Oshler Fleming caught the pass. Dusty Dvorak is there very quickly and very Hollyman as well. Time now for our Chrysler Drive summary. It won't take long to summarize the AM Drive. Chrysler would probably rather see longer drives with more yardage. But this Oklahoma Sooners defense, over 50% of the time that they're on the field, three plays and out against the opposition. And AM finally getting a little something going with the passing game. Five man rush. And is incomplete intended for Weber. It'll be third down and long. Last week, when the Aggies were shut out for the first time since the 99 Alamo Bowl against Penn State, they did move the ball from time to time from 20 to 20. They had some turnovers in the red zone that really hurt. But today, they have really not moved the ball at all. 118 yards of offense in the fourth quarter. And at this point, on third and a little more than 10, I don't know that you necessarily have to go for the first down, Sean, because I would start to think of using all four downs at this point in the game. It's a three-man rush. Ferris is passed deflected, and it's incomplete. Tipped by Rocky Kalmus. Kalmus very quietly having his usual outstanding game. He is so good in every aspect. That time he drops off in coverage, reads the eyes of Ferris, gets in the passing lane, and at six foot three, able to get up and get a hand on it. Big punt for Cody Skates. Oh, wow. He's just getting warmed up. That's a bomb halfway into the end zone. 55-yard punt. Back 
in Norman, Oklahoma. These fans were a bit concerned early on when Texas A&M took a 10 nothing lead. But seems like the Sooners have things firmly in control now. With the ball in a 14 point lead. This is an A&M team that can not get anything done offensively. And a quick pass. It's Savage pulled down by a face mask. And made a couple of moves to turn it into a two-yard gain, and they'll tack on the penalty yardage. Marcus Jasmine made the tackle, but seemed to have the headgear. So hard. It's such a nice hustle play by Jasmine, who's the nose guard. Get blockers all out in front for Savage. And as Jasmine gets over there, just reaching out to grab anything. The right call, though, is that head spins around. That's the personal foul type. When they see the head going the other direction, but you really can't fault Jasmine. That's nice hustle from his nose guard spot, just trying to make a play. And the umpire was going to make sure we knew who the flag was on. He looked like he... Fired it right at Marcus Jasmine. Just don't throw it at his eye. No, he's the biggest target on that defense. He's the biggest body. And 6'4", 310 pounds. Red shirt freshman from New Orleans. Played only two years of football in high school. The coach is very impressed with his development as a young player, given the relative lack of experience. Wes Bodovich tackled Hibble. And, of course, Hibble's predecessor led them to the national championship last year, Josh Heupel, and he's with Leslie Goodell. And he's not accustomed to standing on the sidelines, and he said it's been a long fall. How hard is it for you to watch the game from this perspective? Oh, it's good to be back here and watch the Sooners play, but it's been a long fall not being able to go out there and perform. Now, you've watched the first half of this game and not a lot of breathing room. They seem to have opened up a little. What are your impressions? Yeah, I think Nate's doing a good job of taking care of the football right now. Obviously, our defense is playing great football. And, uh, you know, if you can just hold on to that lead, then we'll be all right. Do you talk to him? And if so, what kind of conversations do you guys have? Yeah, I've gotten a chance to talk with him a little bit. He's doing a great job leading the team. Uh, really excited about the second chance that he's gotten here uh, the last couple of weeks to get out there and play. You spent the preseason with the Miami Dolphins. You injured some ligaments in your wrist. What's the latest, and what are your plans for the future? Had surgery a month ago, ready to get healthy, and hopefully I'll start being able to work out for some teams in January and February. You spending your time here in Norman and getting better? <laughs> yeah, I'm spending my time here watching football and getting rehab. And he said he wasn't at the Nebraska game, guys, and uh, confidently he said he'll be in Dallas for the next one. Mm. Of course, it'll be in the Big 12 championship game and a rematch if the two teams take care of business. Griffin carrying on third and short, and he appears to have the first down. You know, very close at the 48-yard line. It's interesting, Sean, the comment he just made about Nate Hibble feeling like he got another chance. He got hurt against Texas. And then Jason White came in and played very well. Got the start because he played well against Nebraska. Then he got hurt. Feels like this is another chance for him to prove himself. And early in the game, you might have seen that, that little bit of pressure feeling that he still needs to prove himself. Ready. Ready, Curtis. It is a first down. If time permits, stay tuned for the thrifty car rental post-game report featuring scores and highlights from across the country with John Saunders and Terry Bowden. Everybody will be interested in that Miami-Boston college score. Miami, number one in the polls, number two in the BCS. Got to figure, even if they get a win, Miami, if it's not very oppressive against Boston College, they can come down in those computer rankings. Miami leads BC 12-7 at Boston College. The Eagles giving them a battle despite being without William Green, their leading rusher. Quentin Griffin, the ball carry, and Linus Smith made the tackle. Even if it's a narrow win, and I think with BC at 6-2, and two, and with a couple of quality wins, including a win over Notre Dame, a win uh, is a win against the 6-2 and two opponent if Miami does get the victory. Speaking of that 6-2 and two opponent, you have to have a lot of respect for Tom O'Brien to discipline his very best player when they absolutely needed him today against Miami. And a lot of coaches would have said, you know, we'll sit down next mm -hmm. week against Rutgers. Absolutely. Tom O'Brien, the former Marine, putting the discipline action in effect for this week's game against Miami. Rick 
Griffin took the pass and took it down to the Texas A&M 36. Terrence Peel made the tackle. First down Sooners. And Quentin Griffin just made big fans of his offensive line. Because at the end of that play, he could have gone out of bounds. Of course, the clock stops for a second while they reset the chains. But as soon as it's set, clock starts again. You can start running some more time off the clock. Very heads-up play by Griffin. Just let's get that clock running with a 14-point lead. Moving again on offense. Get these big fellows home as soon as we can. Move out of the shotgun. David to Griffin. Oklahoma very effectively now moving the ball and taking that time off the clock. 19 rushes for 75 yards for Quentin Griffin. Rocky Bernard made the stop. Here's where you start to see where Texas A&M, Sean, they're just not playing with the same fire and, and energy that they had earlier in the game. I mean, the time of possession heavily in Oklahoma's favor. Over 30 minutes now to just over 21 for Texas A&M, and it's starting to take its toll on this very good Texas A&M defense. Only a two-to-one advantage in time of possession in this half. Hibble out to the fake, throws short. Trent Smith out of bounds at the 30s. Just inside the 30, Sean Weston and Everett Smith collared him. Six receptions now for 63 yards for Smith. There's also a black belt in Taekwondo, and he has his pilot slices. It's the Super Bowl champion Ravens and the Tennessee Titans in Monday Night Football, 9 Eastern, 6 Pacific. Of course, that would be Monday night right here on ABC. <laughs> Hibble on third down. They need to make the 26-yard line, and they do. On the completion to Josh Norman at the 24. An impressive drive underway here for the Sooners. They started at their own 20, and they've advanced to the 24-yard line of the Aggies. Josh Norman, one of those guys who has played so many different positions. He's very big, the inside receiver on the slot. 6'2", 233 pounds. You would think he's as big as a tight end. Well, he used to play tight end. He also played running back. But as classes start to come in, Bob Stoops has proven to be a very, very good recruiter. These guys that get older in the program got to bounce around a little bit to fight their way on the field. And he's done a great job blocking downfield on all these screens today. And play of the drive. Griffin with the catch. Flag down. Griffin. Bounced off the hit and made it to the 15-yard line. But there is a flag down back at the 23. And, of course, right after you talk nice about a guy, he gets called for holding. I believe they got Josh Norman over on the side there, although it looked like a pretty clean block out on the edge. In a relatively penalty-free game. Holding. On the offense, 10 yards from the spot of the foul, repeat the down. The fourth flag against Oklahoma, and A&M has been penalized three times. Sean, when we were talking yesterday, some of the players, and Bob Stoops especially, very obviously runs a disciplined program here. You can just tell by the play on the field. He has his team ready to play for every game, regardless of the opponent. But time and time again, you hear about the teaching. There's not a lot of yelling and screaming. They're very one-on-one. -on -one. His coaches are very hands-on, including himself, in dealing with his players. And I think that's what you have to do in a new age when these players can find out so much information about your program. You have to go to that where it's more one-on-one, -on -one, not a lot of yelling and screaming, because they've got to go out and help you recruit as well. Hibble throws for Josh Norman, and he's in trouble. Drop for a loss. Back at the 35-yard line. Sean Weston up from the corner. to make the stop. Sophomore from Inglewood, California. Grew up in a very tough neighborhood. A lot of gangs. As a matter of fact, he wasn't often allowed to play outside as a youngster. But his family kept him on track. Thought he'd stick around L.A., go to USC or UCLA. But the tradition of the wrecking crew defense, he says, what brought him to Texas A&M. He made his mark early as a freshman last year. He was a freshman All-American. They counted on him heavily and he paid off. Gets away. 
It's a block from Norman. And it's finally out of bounds near the 20 yard line. They'll spot him out of the 22. Ryan Gamble shoved him out. It looked like it might be a sack. Turns out to be a 12 yard gain. Last week against Tulsa, the coaches pointed out time and time again how much it looked like Hibble had become a more aggressive rusher. There was a few times where he ducked his shoulder. What a very athletic move. It looked like he was going to step out of bounds, tightrope down, and put Oklahoma in a much better spot to convert this third down. But the coach was very impressed last week with how he ran. At the very least, Daddy got them back in the field goal position, and the field goal right now would be huge and make it a three-score game. Hibble takes the snap. Fires out of the flat. Mark Clayton weaves his way to the first down yardage. Needing the 14-yard line, made it to the 11. Hibble's a lot sharper now than he was early on. A different quarterback than we saw in the first half. Mark Clayton, another young receiver that they're so excited about. We got a bunch of trips formation over the top, very physical route running. But that's just such a good route. That's a shallow cross route, Sean. And this is a young receiver, a freshman. A lot of times, they'll drift a little deep on that route, which allows the safety to cut underneath of it. But that's the one thing that Mangino and Chuck Long talked about. For a young man, he runs very disciplined routes. Nibbles hit on nine straight passes now. He's 24 out of 37 for the game. He carries on first down and gets two to the nine before he got popped by Rocky Bernard and Brian Gamble. Nibbles, the son of a coach. His dad was his high school coach in Georgia, Jefferson Davis High School. John, he's taken an awful lot of shots today. Again, another design quarterback running play we saw when he stretched out for that touchdown. It looked like he might have dinged his left shoulder. I know he's getting up slowly. He's really in no hurry. They're going to burn as much clock as possible. But he looks like he's taking a pretty good pound. Here. Seven nine. Griffin driven back. Gerard Penwright has had a strong day at outside linebacker up around the line of scrimmage all day. And we can't fault this defense, Ed. Mm -hmm. I mean, they've really played just about as well as the Oklahoma defense. But some mistakes on special teams and the offense just dreadful for A&M. I don't care how well you play defensively. When the other offense has the ball 12 more minutes than your offense, at some point, the tank's going to run dry. And I think that's what we're seeing here late in the fourth. Oklahoma's run 31 more plays on offense. This is the 32nd and a touchdown. Mark Clayton. Mark Clayton right here at the top of your screen has fought his way onto the field. Just total confusion by Texas A&M. There's no way that that cornerback couldn't have thought he had inside help. Clayton just goes in, finds the hole in the zone, what was supposed to be his own, but obviously was not a very good one by A&M. And again, Mark a disciplined pressure. Second touchdown reception of the year. Down lead for Oklahoma. Seven times the national champions, the Oklahoma Sooners, most recently last season. Some lean years between 85 and 2000. The arrival of one of the great athletic administrators in the country, Joe Castiglione, to be. The athletic director here, and his selection of Boston. And the glory has been returned to the Sooner football program. Vance Smith, the backup quarterback in now. The day is over for Mark Ferris. 
I'm inclined to agree with you, Ed. You were imploring them for much of the game, the Aggies, to maybe put the ball in the hands of Ferris and let him throw it a little bit more. He threw just 20 times. Really is their best offensive player and leader, especially when Farmer went out. He was 10 for 20 for 59 yards today. And if you look at what he did last year, you know, they did a lot of three wide receiver sets, emptied the backfield. I mean, he's used to that type of offense. I realize that Dino Babers is trying to get back to a little more balance in this offense, but when you get into a game like this where obviously nothing's going right offensively, you just got to take the wraps off and give it a shot. Marshall Fleming finally knocked out of bounds at the 42-yard line by Brandon Everidge. Here's Leslie Goodell. Well, a tough day for Mark Ferris, 10 of 20, 59 yards, and R.C. Slocum said from the beginning the only way they were going to get through this Oklahoma defense was by making the big plays. Well, Van Smith hasn't taken a snap all year. He just took his first, and Ferris is now on the bench. Difficult to make big plays when you're not calling routes down the field. They move the pocket a couple of times, but not as much as I thought they would. And just never really tried to establish any kind of vertical passing game. They got Terrence Thomas, a gifted true freshman in there, the fastest wide receiver. Got him in, he had a nice catch on the comeback, and then they brought him right out of the ball game. The deep ball, and it is incomplete. Very well thrown by Van Smith, but Terrence Murphy couldn't make the catch. With Derek straight in coverage. That was a good-looking throw by the junior from Grand Prairie, Texas, just outside of Dallas. Dan Smith. Big guy with a big arm, 6'4", 240 pounds. Leslie mentioned that this is the first ball game that he's had an attempt in. Coaches love his arm strength. Looks like Terrence Murphy might have uh, got the wind knocked out of him when the defensive back fell across him there. Indiana. With the lead in Michigan State and Ohio State, a surprisingly easy time of it in Big Ten play today. Pass thrown short, just back to the line of scrimmage to Keith Joseph. And we took down here three minutes remaining. And Texas A&M is going to have to bounce back in the regular season finale to avoid finishing the regular season on a three-game losing streak. There. One remaining game is 13 days from now. The day after Thanksgiving, the traditional game at Texas. He'll be played at College Station. Two games left for Oklahoma at Texas Tech next week in a game many of you will see right here on ABC Sports. And they'll wrap up the season with Oklahoma State. Smith sack. Jimmy Wilkerson and Jonathan Jackson. Jackson's a true freshman from Houston. That is the first sack of the day for Oklahoma. So if you're looking for a bright spot for the Texas A&M offense, there it is. What a nice job by Wilkerson. Again, look at the arm rip underneath the left tackle. Very nice job of him getting underneath Jamie Hightower, the left tackle. But those long arms, when you get that rip, you can really get some leverage. Booming punt by Skates. Another one into the end zone. 64-yard punt. Matching his longest of the season. He also had a 64-yarder against Iowa State.
does with Woody Danzler. A little surprised that they'd want Hibble to get hit as much as he did with Jason White going under the knife on Tuesday to have his ACL uh, fixed. Well, it appears Miami is going to survive that scare that Boston College on a late interception. And Oklahoma had an early scare with a 10 0 AM lead in the first quarter, but the AM offense couldn't do anything with the lead. And the Sooners will come back to take command. And that will end it. Ronaldo works, tackled by Eric Crutchfield. That takes Texas A&M out of it in the Big 12 South. The Chevrolet players of the game are Brian Campbell. He had the 18-yard fumble return for the only touchdown for Texas A&M. And Nate Hibble, a bit of a rough start, finished 25 out of 38 for 195 yards, two touchdowns throwing and another one rushing. In recognition of their efforts, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. Here's Leslie Goodell. Well, Coach Stoops, you weren't happy with the offense in the first half, but they came out strong in the second half. We did. We executed. Nate hung in there, threw the ball, ran it well, uh, got us in some good plays running. Uh, really solid all the way around. Defense was, was outstanding, and offense got us going. Talk about Nate, because you guys have been concerned about some of the injuries, but as uh, Mark Mangino said before the game, he told him to go 100% on every snap. Were you ever concerned that uh, that, that shoulder was going to act up? No, um, you know, you, Nate, Nate's a strong guy. He's exhibited toughness. He continues to play hard. Um, he feels fine. He, he's, he's competing, and uh, that last drive and put it in the end zone and overcame a, uh, a lot of yards on a, you know, after some penalties was great to see. Nate really had a lot of poison stuck in there on a good ball at the end. Your defense, R.C. Slocum said before the game that he was really respectful of your defense and how difficult it was going to be. They'd have to make big plays to beat you. You have to be proud of what they did today. Defense has just been outstanding. Uh, you know, uh, the way they play, no matter what is happening offensively, we always, we always have a, a great opportunity to win. They continue to play well, and, and hopefully that will continue. And looking ahead to Texas Tech, you have your hands full there? Absolutely, uh, Texas Tech. In this league, you're going to play good people every week, and Texas Tech uh, does a great job. Has had a lot of big wins this year. Uh, we all know Mike Leach and with, with us, so it'll be good competition. They're always good, so we'll look forward to the fight. Coach, thanks. Congratulations. Thirty-one ten, the final. Oklahoma goes to nine and one overall, and Texas A&M with its second straight loss now seven and three. Our final score once again, Oklahoma 31, Texas A&M 10. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com, keyword ABC Sports. Now for Leslie Goodell and Ed Cunningham, Sean McDonough saying so long from Norman. Here's John Saunders with the Thrifty Car Rental Postgame.